Now, there are some people who think online poker is simply unbeatable, but I'm not one of them who is in that camp. You see, if I never won, I wouldn't continue playing, and I've been at this now for over 15 plus years. You know, I've had plenty of cash outs, my fair share of good runs playing, and also bad runs. And while you can't control the way the cards land on the Turner River, you can control your emotions and the decisions you're making on the virtual felt. Those are the things that are in your control. But I'm going to be giving you guys five reasons online poker is still beatable and breaking down some of the hands here on Ignition Poker I recently played at the Tuna No Limit tables. Of course, as I'm getting this, if you guys are looking for some great poker sites, bonuses, or would like to get on our poker newsletter where we send out one email a week on updates, we'll have some links directly below in the description. Also, if you could tap the like as you're watching this, I would appreciate it. Okay. So here we go with the first reason online poker is beatable, and it's because of recreational players. You see a lot of people who play online poker kind of just play on a whim and aren't very serious about the game. You know, they deposit maybe a few hundred or maybe even a thousand or a couple thousand dollars into their accounts, and they just don't care how things turn out. And yes, these players exist on every major poker site. It's not just ignition. All right, second reason is tilt and emotions. You know, when players take bad beats and you're sitting with one of those players at the table, they do tilt things like shove all in with jack nine offsuit for no reason. It happens all the time. Okay, third reason is that bluffing, when you get good at it, is an art form. Most players online try and play ABC poker. They just sit back and wait for hands, but that just doesn't work as you move up in stakes. If you can get good at bluffing, which takes time, your win rate will go up drastically, and you'll become a better player along the way. Trust me on that. Fourth reason is that you know, you're still playing against humans. Uh, this is key because humans don't play perfect poker. We make mistakes. I make mistakes. It happens. And really the last reason is that this game is always evolving, and you need to evolve with it if you plan on excelling long term. You know, a strategy or approach that may have worked a few months ago could be obsolete. This is really just the nature of online poker, and that's what makes it so great. Another thing about online poker that makes it so great is, you know, if good cards always won and you didn't, you know, get sucked out on every once in a while, the game would be boring. So, you know, bad beats are part of this game. You just learn to deal with that. And don't let it affect you. You know, uh, that is key. I think that's probably, that was the biggest problem for me for a long time. I would get emotional, you know, when my aces or kings would get cracked to like pocket tens or jacks or something like that. But, you know, I just accept it's part of the game. It's There's variance in this. You know, you're not going to win every time, but you're really just trying to improve um, and do little things uh, that you maybe weren't doing a week or a month ago and you started to notice uh, maybe some leaks in your game, just things like that. Okay, and this is what I'm talking about as far as, uh, you know, the recreational players are just not the greatest. You're going to see probably one of the most ridiculous shoves I've seen in a while. I mean, it's probably been a, a week or two, but this one was just ridiculous. I mean, get ready for it. Um, you know, we're going to be dealing with an all-in shove. Obviously, I'm never folding here. It doesn't really matter what he has. If he has aces, we're beat, but, you know, we're never folding here. Um, but we don't have anything to worry about because... What this guy is going to turn over, um, pretty ridiculous, right? Uh, I couldn't really figure out, um, you know, why he made this call. He probably could have just let this go, but, you know, whatever. Not going to give it away just yet. You also got to figure, I'm raising from early position, so I likely have a good hand. And, uh, you know, whatever this guy's sitting in the big blind with doesn't really matter. Okay, um, hope you guys are ready for it. Here we go. Yeah, exactly. Okay, fortunately it didn't have ace-king. We would have definitely been in trouble right there. That was the good news. Turn card was a little bit scary. But still, um, you know, uh, just... <laughs> I mean, I don't know why you make that play with nines right there um, by making that call. He easily could have folded that. If I was in his position, I don't think that I'm making that call. Honestly, three-betting 
from an early position raiser with pocket nines in the smaller big blind doesn't exactly make a lot of sense to me. If you're dealing with a late position raiser, it would make sense. But in that spot, that was just a bad, a bad play all around by that guy, uh, for sure. Um, and he definitely was not thinking at all. He let the emotions get to him, and he made a bad play. And, of course, he regrets doing that. No one's going to sit there and be okay with that. But it is what it is, guys. So, you know, you tell me. And we're, we're not done. So please stick around. We got, a, we got a few more good hands in here. But, you know, online poker, when people say it's unbeatable and all this other stuff, it's just like, what are you talking about? Um, like I said, obviously you're going to take the beats, uh, the bad beats, but it's part of the game. But as far as it being beatable, I mean, come on, man. People are winning big tournaments all the time online, getting some big payouts for those. You got people still crushing cash games all the time, especially six max. Um, you know, so yeah, don't don't believe it. Okay, here we go. Um, you know, not a good flop for us. A queen would be nice here, but at the same time, um, not exactly what we wanted to see. But I made a good play in this one, and it kind of comes back to what I was already talking about as well, about bluffing. It's a bit of an art form. You know, you get better at it over time. Um, I could have played this a couple different ways. Uh, you know, I could have just folded it. A part of me almost hit the fold button, but I decided, you know what, um, I think that he's just trying to get me off this hand. I had to think about it a little bit, uh, you know, and I almost folded. You can see me actually go for the fold button here. But I decided, you know what, I'm going to raise him, see what he does. And, uh, you know, then we'll take it to the to the river and make our decision. But um, I, I felt like something was up with this. Something was going off with me. I'm like, you know what, I just don't believe you. And, uh, you know, my instincts here proved right. So we are going to get him to fold. Nice, uh, you know, bluff re-raise right there. Or at least I thought so. We would have hit the ace on the river, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, if he had a spade, we were in trouble. Now, this was kind of interesting. So, I mean, I've got ace-king suited, right? And, you know, you got ace-king suited. If you're dealing with a three-bet with this, um, and I actually said this maybe a few videos ago, but <sighs> ace-king is a tough hand because, you know, you can get stacked with it. And especially with online poker, you don't really know what people have because you can't see them. So you can't really like, you know, you're basically just going by mathematical decisions. And ace-king offsuit, that is what it is. But when ace-king suited, it does have a tendency to crack bigger hands. Those bigger hands that I'm talking about, when it's suited, you can you can crack uh, pocket aces, you can crack pocket kings, queens, um, you know, lots of different hands. But this is when it's suited. I'm not talking about when it's unsuited. So even if you get in spots where you're getting it all in preflop with ace king suited versus aces, I know it might sound crazy, but there have been quite a, a few times where. Um, my ace king suiteds are cracking aces and kings quite a bit, and I'm not talking about you know hitting a, a pair of aces against pocket kings or something. I'm talking about hitting flushes. So when it's suited, you should not be afraid to shove with it. Okay, when it's not suited, you could play it a little bit more carefully. But when it's suited and you're dealing with you know like three bets, um, sometimes even four bets, uh, you know. You got to take the risk and you just kind of got to go with it uh, mathematically. And, uh, you know, if you do run into those hands and you lose, it is what it is. But here we're getting it all in. No doubt in my mind here, especially on this this raise this guy put. In. I think he bet like 24 bucks um, and kind of silly. He like insta folded that hand. I couldn't really figure that out. I'm like, what are you doing? OK. All right, we got a couple more hands here, but like I said, we still got a, a couple good ones, so please do not leave just yet. Um, anyways, I decided to limp from early position with the ace-10. Not really sure why I did this. I think it was almost a mistake, like I read the hand wrong when I hit that button, but it's fine. This is kind of just like a, a check down hand anyways. You got the small in big blind. Nobody's raising here, so everybody's got, you know, whoever, whatever these guys got, they've got bad cards. I know that. We are going to hit a pair on the flop, but I really just, you know, play this hand as passively as possible. Um, a lot of draws out there, clearly, with um, straights. And, uh, you know, just no reason to get aggressive with this. I just checked it, let it play out, see what happens kind of thing.
And of course, a jack hit on the turn. And truthfully, if one of these guys put out even a small bet, I'm just mucking this hand. I'm not even going to like continue with it. It's it's done. The hand is done. Now, part of me was also thinking maybe maybe it's possible my tens are good here, and it was kind of looking like it, right? We've got third pair to this board, but if anybody's got a queen, you know, but no one did, so we won that one. Okay, and this is going to be the final hand of the session, and it was so ridiculous. You guys got to see this. So we were up a good amount of money here. I decided just to play this 8-5 suited. Normally, I wouldn't, but we were up so much you know, for playing for maybe like 30 minutes in this session. It was very short. We got a lot of good hands in this one, which is nice, but um, I decided to make a call with it. And we have nothing on the flop, by the way, but I decided to continue with it. I didn't even want to like throw it away. So uh, very, very interesting hand. Um, I don't recommend playing the 8-5 suited, but like I said, I wanted to gamble a little bit because we were up a lot. And it's not like I was putting a whole lot in here anyways. Um, and yeah, so here we go. Pretty sure we're even, it's just a heads up situation to me against the other player. All right, player six taking his sweet time here. I thought maybe he was going to three bet this. Now, if a three bet came, um, if that guy would have called the three bet, maybe I make the call. Okay, anyways. Here's the deal. This flop actually wasn't as bad as I thought. So we're looking at hitting that miracle six here or looking at runner, runner clubs. That's about it, right? I mean, but I decided to stick with it because we do have some outs. The turn card um, was exactly what we were looking for. We got the club on the turn, um, and we're still looking at whatever. Our outs definitely went up with that club. So we need a six. We got like four outs there, or we need the club which had our outs come up, and uh, the six did come. Uh, and it was a club, and it was super ridiculous. Um, just a great run out here. Uh, I had to put in a bet, basically bet the pot or close to it. I think it was like around 40 bucks, something like that. Um, and I felt like that was the right sizing. But just a crazy run out on this one. And, um, yeah, the gamble definitely paid off here playing this hand. Uh, unfortunately for us, he is going to end up, you know, thinking about this and he isn't going to make the call. But I do hope you guys enjoyed another, uh, you know, session here on Ignition. Um, you know, like I said, if, uh, you know, you haven't got on our poker newsletter yet, definitely would recommend checking that out. Um, we got some links uh, in the description below. Tap the like if you haven't. Uh, you subscribe and we'll see you on the next poker video.